Step 7, The Connecting Rods. This will be the final step in this series. I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope it was informative. I will do a couple more videos in a few months on adding bearings as well as making fans and flywheels. Plans are available at jeplans.com. Welcome back. Today I will be making the connecting rods for the Phoenix engine. I'll be making them out of cherry wood. as a pretty consistent grain, easy to work with. The connecting rods will be assembled with this music wire and attached. Um, I believe I have a pattern, developed a pattern where we'll, we'll be able to remove and disconnect the top from the connecting, from the uh, crankshaft as needed. Um, first we're going to start out by attaching the patterns to the wood. All right. Here I have them attached to the wood. Got to do it pretty straight so your holes when you drill them out go in the way you want. Same with the bottom one here. We'll be, I'll be sure to put it square in the drill press. I drill the holes. Since I'll be using this music wire, I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to get a drill bit that's slightly smaller than that wire, so that uh, it fits in snug in the joints. Then I'll just you know widen one piece of the joint so that it moves freely. Right, I've drilled out that one eighth. We've used the small bit to drill just to that depth from the top. We've drilled through with the small bit and drilled through to, for the attachment to the piston, that portion of it. This is the connecting rod for the displacer. It's going to be hinged right here. We've drilled a hole out in the bottom. That's going to go on the displacer shaft. Then we're going to make a cut on that same spot so we can wrap something around it to pinch it onto the displacer shaft. We drilled out that. That's where the hinge will be. And we've drilled out the top in the same manner, the 1 8 for the uh, crankshaft. Now we're going to take the piece over to the scroll saw and cut them out with a method called compound scrolling or cutting. First I'm going to cut, cut them down to the shape so it'll be a little easier to cut the side. It may take more than one try to get this right. That's why there's more than one copy on the pattern. Before I get too far along, I'm going to cut out or notch it a little bit on the cuts for the crank shaft attachment. I'm not going to cut them all the way through, I'll finish them once I'm done. Yeah, I can't do that. Cut out both sides, take it apart. And that is my connector rod. 
and I finished the cuts for how the top's going to attach following basically this pattern I'll be all set just need to use the this as a support I'm cutting it out On the displacer connecting rod, I uh, cut out the bottom part separately first by partially cutting one side, then doing it the other way. So I'm basically cutting that one out in two parts. It's going to be hinged right here. Resulting connecting rods assemble something like this. Music wire through. You have to freshen your, your uh, the holes you drilled. I have a tool that came actually with the small tool uh, drill bits. I was able to do that. The idea of the top having a pin here so that we can go like that, like that and then uh, take it on and off the crankshaft as needed. Let's put it back in. So, uh, obviously that's not how we put on the crankshaft because in this case the crankshaft it has to fit in there. But we use the pins to get it on and off. Relatively low friction. We can grease it a little bit if we want to. But that's uh, how the piston connecting rod works. In the case of the displacer connecting rod, the top part works the same. Same pin, pin configuration on the bottom. A lot of focus here. It'll basically go on like that. I might have a little strap or something to hold some tension there. And uh, that'll drive the displacer. Once it's all hooked up, look something like this. You know, the, the top part that goes that the top part of the connecting rod you may need to clean out a little bit with a round needle file so it runs with pretty low friction. Little side view. Right here I twisted some uh, small gauge copper wire on the base of the attachment to the um, displacer shaft. So, well, it's not too warm yet. Get a piece of how the displacer connecting rod works. Like. 
If you notice I no longer have the springs attached, that's because I was going to go back and replace the uh, displacer, but I found that the seal on the bottom had sealed so tightly I couldn't remove it without damaging the, the engine, so it wasn't really a serviceable base anymore. It, but if I did want to replace the displacer, I could cut it off with an X-Acto knife and then uh, simply you know, reseal it. The piston itself did not need to be as tall as it was, but I like it to stick up above so people can see it moving up and down, just like it's nice to be able to see this place are moving up and down. So, I'll turn the heat off, so it should start to slow down. So, those connecting rods have worked out quite well. As this engine breaks in a bit, I expect it to run a little smoother. Probably don't, uh, also it, the top gets very hot, so I don't recommend touching it like that. <laughs> Thanks for watching the series. I may have a couple more add-on videos that uh, deal with making the fans and flywheels, perhaps adding the bearings into the engine. But, uh, you certainly can put a little grease on the different points that have uh, friction that smooth things out a bit. <laughs>